Hello and welcome to an Envato Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Pordilo and in today's video I'm going to show you how to create a frosted glass effect in CSS. I'm sure you've seen this effect before in iOS and macOS. Uh, recently even Windows started rolling this into its apps so it's definitely gaining some popularity. Now we can create this in our web pages using CSS and I'm going to show you two ways you can do it. The first method is actually widely supported in terms of browsers, but it takes a little bit uh, more CSS to make it work. So to get started, we're going to uh, create a div class container, which we'll actually use to represent the uh, glass effect. And that's all the HTML we're going to need. So let's just focus on CSS. I'm going to start by adding a background image to the body and I'm just going to use an image from Unsplash. You can find the link in the um, written version of the tutorial. We'll just uh, set this to no repeat and let's go ahead and change the uh, background size to cover so we can see the entire image. And one thing, and this is actually really important, I'm going to set background attachment to fixed. Now we're doing this because this background will actually be inherited by uh, the children of the body and we want to keep the inherited background full size. I'll show you uh, in a little bit what happens if we don't set this but for now let's just say keep the inherited background full size. All right. Now let's go ahead and style our container. Let's give it a width of let's say 30 rems. Let's give it a height of 20 rems and let's style this with a box shadow. Let's say 00, zero for X, one rem for blur, zero and let's use a black color, so RGBA with a 0.2 or 20% opacity. And let's go ahead and center this on our page. So for that I'm gonna make the body into a, a grid container. So display grid and let's say align items center and justify content center. And let's also set a height to the body to 100 viewport height. All right, so now uh, this is centered. Um, by the way, these styles have nothing to do with the actual method of creating the frosted glass. They're simply for uh, demo purposes. So the idea behind this method is that we have the container for the frosted glass and we create a pseudo element where we set a box shadow which we then blur. That's the whole idea. So let's go ahead and create that pseudo element. It can be a before, it can be an after, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's uh, reset the content and I actually made a typo here. Let's fix that. And then uh, we're going to set a position to absolute and also let's set a position relative here. And then we'll reset its positioning to zero all the way. So top zero, left zero right zero and bottom zero. Now it's time to add the color of the glass and we'll do that by using an inset box shadow. So we're going to say box shadow inset zero zero. Let's do like a really high spread like 2000 pixels but this might depend on uh, the size of your container and then we'll um, define the color of our glass. In my case I want it to be white with a 0.5 or 50% opacity. Now to create the frosted effect, all we have to do is add a CSS filter. So filter blur and you can use whatever value you want here. In my case, let's go with 10 pixels. Now as you can see, this kind of creates uh, a little bit of an effect here, a little bit of a vignette, I guess. Uh, but it's not exactly what we're looking for. And that's because we haven't set a background to it. So if we set the background to inherit and we also set it here, 
on the main container, we will now have the effect that we're looking for, right? So this is where the background attachment fixed comes into play because if I uh, comment this, we'll still get a blur, but the background is not gonna be what we're looking for. Here's a one pixel blur. So if we do this without background attachment fixed, the image will be resized inside my small container. But if we do set it to fixed, uh, we have continuation between our main background, which is set on the body, and the blurred out portion or the frosted glass portion that we see in our container. And that, that's why it's important to set background inherit on both the container and the container pseudo element. And from here, you can play around with the blur value, set it to whatever you want. You can set it to maybe 30 pixels to get a really blurred out effect or just uh, something smoother like 10 pixels. Now we still have these edges here that don't really look that great. So to fix that, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set a margin of minus 20 pixel on the uh, pseudo element and that's gonna make everything bigger. And to cut the blurred out edges, all I have to do is set overflow to hidden on my main element. So essentially, we're blurring out this pseudo element and we're hiding the excess blur by setting overflow to hidden on my main container element. Then we can go ahead and maybe add a border radius to this uh, to make it look a little bit better. And you can also add uh, content on top of this. Now here's the thing about content. If we open up the HTML and let's say I'm gonna add a simple text, right? Initially we can't see it. Uh, that's because it's being obscured by the pseudo element. So a way around that is to set a Z index to a specific value on the container and then set Z index to a smaller value on the pseudo element. And that's gonna allow you to uh, see content above my frosted glass. So that is method number one. We create our container and then we create a pseudo element on the container, which we position absolutely, and we uh, give it a big box shadow inset, and then we basically filter it. Uh, this is using CSS filters, which if we search for on can I use, you'll see that CSS filter effects is pretty well supported, even in uh, some uh, uh, versions of Edge, some newer versions of Edge, but overall it's pretty uh, well supported. And I was, as I was saying in the beginning, uh, it is the most widely supported method of the two I'm gonna show you, uh, but the CSS is also um, kind of uh, complicated here. Now let's go ahead and see method number two. For method number two, we start with the same basic HTML. We have a div class container. And I'm also setting a uh, background image to the body, setting background size to cover, and also doing the display grid and alignment options on the body, just like I did in the previous example. And I'm simply doing this to center my, uh, my container. This is for demo purposes. Now the second method involves using uh, a CSS property called backdrop filter, and it goes like this. Let's style our, con our uh, container pretty much the same way as we did in the previous uh, example, setting a width and a height, and a box shadow. Of course, you can style this however you want. Let's also add the border radius. And then let's set the background color and you can set this to whatever you want. Let's do again white. Let's do a smaller value this time. And here's where the magic happens. Back, drop, filter, blur, let's say five pixels. 
and we're going to go ahead and add an auto prefixer uh, to get the uh, proper prefix for Safari and there it is. That's the result we get and we can play around with the blur value to get exactly the, uh, the blur amount that we want. We can also play around with the um, background color to define the color of our frosted glass. So here we have a violet and you can also do like the primary colors or any kind of RGBA value that you want. For now let's just stick with white. So as you see much simpler syntax just by using a single property. It's called backdrop filter. We didn't need any kind of uh, pseudo elements. It just works super super easy to use. Now the downside to using backdrop filter is actually the browser support. So as you can see CSS backdrop filter is barely supported in Edge and Safari and that's pretty much it. Probably maybe it's going to um, arrive in more browsers but for now uh, in December 2018 this or these are the only browsers you can use it on. And there you have it, two different ways of creating a frosted glass effect in CSS. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial and until next time, I'm Adi, take care.